Support for Tom's Brain comes from Uber. Get your free £10 credit by using the code UberTomPod. T-O-M-P-O-D. Join now and get your first £10 ride for free. Honestly, it's just flown by. You know, this this podcast is going to be tricky because I've got zero medical development. And that was something that I was thinking about before setting this episode up. The whole podcast idea, and it's been gestating for very many months. I mean, you could even say many, many years. But the drive came last year when I applied to be on The Undateables and I thought that I was going to... Well, of course I thought I was going to be picked. Who wouldn't pick me? Who wouldn't want to date me? Apparently nobody. Now, I don't know where the problem was. I mean, on reflection, it's kind of a good thing. It, it, well, it's not a good thing, but it's a, it's an accepted thing that I didn't get on the show. I mean, my friend Carrie, you know Carrie, she said that she's happy that I wasn't on, that she's never seen an episode. So... I think unless you've seen an episode, you can't really speak because the way it's perceived and the way it's advertised is not actually the way it is. The show is has a lot more heart than it seems to have on the surface. And that's what I wanted to come across. I want, I wanted my, I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to be portrayed in a in a nice light, and I think it would have helped wonders. But I mean, it was quite a big ask for people to accept this rare illness, and. A gay relationship, a, a gay dating platform. I think that is where it stumbled because it was just so niche and it was too niche for what would have been 20 minutes of screen time. I mean, we're on episode 14 and we've barely cracked the surface of what Tom's brain is. You know, I need to really delve into this. Mm-hmm. But I'm not... Ve- I'm, I'm, it's tough to be open and honest and... Are vulnerable because I've had to toughen up. I have to be very tough because I've been through so much and I'm continually going through so much. If I didn't have this tough attitude, then I would crumble. And that kind of Reminds me of before I came out to my mum. The only thing that was stopping me was the thought that if she didn't accept me, then I'd be screwed with the hospital treatment because she is a huge part of t- 
taking care of me. You know, six, seven years ago, she was in control of all my appointments, came with me to see the doctor, made a lot of the decisions. I mean, you think back to my bone marrow transplant when I was 12, I didn't ask for that. I was just going along with it. So, you know, I think back to when I was in the closet, I was, I was thinking, I can't come out because if, if she rejects me, then I'm going to lose. I'm going to, I'm going to crumble. I'm going to, I'm not going to be able to take on, I'm not going to be able to, first of all, deal with the fact that a parent hates me. Um, and then I'm going to have to deal with my hospital treatment on my own. And so I actually started to kind of preempt coming out by taking treatment management into my own hands. And it happened relatively slowly. As it was, I came out in 2009. And then over the next two years, I made more of an input of my treatment because luckily as it happened, everyone was fine. My mum was brilliant and everyone was brilliant. But it, it kind of made me grow up and it wasn't the fact that I made the changes because I was being faced with the thought of handling my hospital treatment alone. It was actually the fact that I wanted to take more of a control. So I made a push to be taken off this infusion of desfrioxamine that I'd been on on my, on my whole life, basically. But more recently, since I was 12, I had a constant infusion attached. It would be changed every week in this balloon inside a bottle that I would carry around in my pocket that was attached to my Hickman line. And it was constantly infusing a solution of desfrioxamine to reduce my iron. And I had that constantly from 12 years old. So for 14 years, I had what, what was essentially an extra limb and a very flimsy one at that because, you know, it's a piece of medical equipment. You know, you think, imagine a drip stand being hooked up to a drip stand. Well, I was constantly walking around with a portable drip stand. <laughs> and so, you know, I would wear baggy clothes. I would be very protective of that side of my body that it was going into. And it was quite, and yeah, it was quite a protective way to live my life. And so coming out, I felt really open that I was still being held back. And also it was a big image problem. Like, you want to think that you are better than that, that you aren't all about image. But the truth is that the world is about image. And I am in some parts very comfortable and accepting of my own appearance, such as my teeth, the scars that I live with on my hands and my face, and now my chest. But to have this extra limb as it was, I was very self-conscious when it came to 
well, being naked, it, you know, it was very, very off-putting, scary, and, you know, if I was going to share myself with someone else, I wanted a better controlling of what the other person saw. So I made a push to get rid of that, to get rid of that infusion. And once I did, I felt more comfortable. And then it went a step further by completely having the Hitman line removed last year. And, you know, that was when I felt like it was a new chapter. I made a push for this Ipoatin, and that was when we started this podcast, and it was going to document what I thought was going to be a new journey, and it didn't work. And so now, I kind of feel guilty and misleading, maybe, I don't know. I feel like once again we've gone back to the familiar, the blood transfusions that I was having since three years old, and I will continue to have them. And so that's life, that's normal, so why why should I document that? It's just it, it, that's just the way it is, just get on with it. So you come to an episode now and I've got nothing to tell you in, in regards to my treatment. It's just continuing a blood transfusion every two weeks. So I had one on Thursday and it's been ages since I've seen Carrie. It had been a good six weeks since I'd seen her. I wasn't too bothered the previous times because having got The Sims 4, it gave me an excuse to have a good five or six hours play on that. And I think I told you that, yeah, my Sim was thinking of getting a child. Well, she got a child. She had a child, rather. She used one of the many, many men in her life to um, get pregnant and have a child. And that child has grown up into a teenager now. Um, and so she's adopted another child. And I was trying to hold off playing as much as possible. Because... There's going to be a new expansion pack released where you can create your own retail business. And my sim has got about 250,000 simoleons, which are the currency. She can definitely open her own business once we get that. As it is. What I wanted to do. Let's get this, I don't want to say get this out of the way because it makes it sound like a chore. And as it is, I do feel very, very, very fortunate that somebody actually gives a crap about my life. <laughs> because sometimes I feel very alone. Yeah. What it is, is... I can be very busy. I was busy on Tuesday, I was busy on Wednesday, I was busy on Thursday. And then we come to Friday and I had nothing. Which thankfully, you know, it was the day after my transfusion, so I like to recharge my batteries. But I, f I get this overwhelming sense of like, a, a very, I go from being active socially to 
just laying in bed watching TV or watching Netflix. And it's quite... I couldn't ri risk getting caught in a funk. So as it were, I actually made an effort to get out of bed and get out of the house before 7pm. And I had just a really, like, where I was, as I would be laying in bed on my own, I just sat in Hotel Chocolat on my own listening to music and I did that until 11 p.m. just like I mean, you know it makes a huge difference like it's the exact same thing you would be doing in bed but because you're out you I feel like I feed off of the energy of other people even if they're not talking to me you still have to like communicate with people to, to, I can't describe it but I'm sure you know what I'm on about I mean maybe you don't maybe just to you that it's never a, you don't have a second thought about socializing it just it just occurs every day but for me it, it sometimes it doesn't and I can feel very introverted and there was a time when I would actively seek to avoid interaction, but I am less like that now. And we will get to that before the end of this podcast when I tell you about how I went out to see a live music show. And uh, funnily enough, it was my stepsister Katie, which you all know. She was performing in the lead of her band, Kel, but we'll get to that because I don't want to mix up the days because I was talking about the transfusion. This time Carrie was there, so she offered to do anything with me and anything to me means Scrabble. I love, I love Scrabble. I'm, I, I don't know if I've told you or not, but I am going to Scrabble Club every month or so with mixed results, but it's fun. It, it's so much better to play an actual board game than play it online. So Carrie got pizza for the whole Teenage Cancer Trust unit, which is for young adults and teenagers. And you know what? Thursday was really good after my transfusion. I picked myself up and I went out. I brought myself home. Um, and I booked my next appointment. And you know, that was something that... Two, two years ago I would have never have done, so... Big, big boy now. <laughs> so where should we go? We'll continue with Carrie, because this that was the second time I'd seen her, um, and the first time was on Tuesday, because within her role, there is an organised event night for patients and ex-patients of TCT or TYA as it's known in Leeds, to meet up outside of the hospital and socialise. You know, because like, for me, I know it's a great help to have that, you know, before I did the meetups, that was my only source of socialising. So we went to, well, the, the restaurant that 20 or so of us were booked in for, neglected to mention the fact that their disabled access was non-existent. 
so one like there was just no option because one of the patients was in a wheelchair and one of the patients had a um artificial limb so just like oh my god in this day and age that a business would not have wheelchair access it just that is just like like we are a busy populated city and if you do not have wheelchair access i mean like, I'm thinking of Lane's Espresso specifically. And, like, as much as I love it, and, I, like, I want to sympathize with them because it's a small local business, but for a big chain like Pizza Express not to have wheelchair access, a bullshit. I'm sorry, but that is bullshit. I can forgive small business, small home businesses for not having wheelchair access but you know sort your shit out pizza express because that is just unforgivable so we took a john <laughs> that got really aggressive but hey ho so we took a john to trinity which is the major shopping center in leeds for the moment because they're opening a new one strangely enough don't talk to me about that either, God knows, I don't understand where that's coming from. Because we have everything in Leeds, what more could we need, a house, a house of Fraser, no? What is it? John Lewis. I don't want to, I don't need anything from John Lewis unless they're going to put in a Krispy Kreme. But no, they're not because that's Selfridges, like, so, no, no, they might do, who knows. Uh, department stores, I just don't understand them. The only one I like is Selfridges. Um, so, we'll see. We took a jaunt into <laughs> Trinity. And that they have all the restaurants like Nando's and... TGI Fridays, so that's where we went, to TGI Fridays, and they were really, they went above and beyond to accommodate us, because we were quite a large party, and we were so large that I ended up sitting with Carrie and Nikki, um, Nikki is the is the role of what Carrie does on the other ward, because the, the TCT has a unit in St. James's Hospital and a unit in Leeds General Infirmary. And on a related note, one of the podcast episodes, either 15 or 16, will be with Nikki. And I'm very excited for you to hear that. We've already recorded it, so... I've known Nikki since I was, like, 14 or something. It was crazy. Um, so I got to sit with her and Carrie. And I didn't have much to contribute to the conversation, but just to hear them talk about work and, like, I could live off of that. Because it's like, it's like literally, like eavesdropping on somebody else's conversation with permission. It's just, it's so comforting to me, I don't know what it is. Probably being around my mum so much, because she talks for days. She can talk you into a corner, she is just so good. At socializing so it's just so relaxing to listen to other people talk <laughs> I'm not one to do it <laughs> to just talk about your life and your day and what you've done and what you think of other people and it's just 
there's just I I don't I find that so hard. I would just rather talk about TV and music and films. Speaking of films, the next two weeks the Lee Jung Film Festival is on. It has a great selection of films, so if you are in Leeds, go to leedsfilm.com or at Leeds Film on Twitter and you will find all the links to the schedule. So the people at TJ Fridays were very, very nice and actually gave us money off the bill. Um, these two waitresses specifically paid for the meal out of their money. So that was like turned went from a bad situation to a, a, an even better situation. I did contribute to the conversation. I talked with Carrie about the lack of a male presence on the ward in terms of activities and stuff. But before I was at that unit, the other unit, I, there was a male presence and I was very good close friends with him and another two males in that job and there's been nothing like that in this unit so well, that's what we were talking about and then on Thursday I actually bumped into well I say bumped into the guy who still works there, <laughs> um, Simon, who I would love to introduce you to Simon because it was when I was writing and I'm going to tell you more about Simon in another episode because he was very, very important in my life and I was very excited to work with him on a screenplay that I got to film in the hospital. So he's very creative, very on the same level as me. I think there could be a Simon's brain if, if that existed. Um, it would be on the same wavelength. So that was really nice to bump into him on the Thursday um, with Carrie as well. And I was saying that we were, there was talking about how there is a lack of male presence because you know he doesn't do what he used to do. He took time out to do a PhD. And now we're going to end with the highlight of the past two weeks, which was getting to see my stepsister Katie perform on stage. She was at the Nation of Shopkeepers, which I've never been to before. And right off the bat, when I knew that I was going to be going, I actually was very hesitant because I'd never been to the place before. And I just could feel myself looking for an excuse not to go. Because... I don't know, it's just one of those things like I was saying earlier. Sometimes I fall back into old patterns and actively avoid social situations where there could be crowds and loud noises and just things that would make me feel anxious. So right off the bat, I invited my mum to come along with me because I knew that if my mum came along, then I could kind of take a back seat and she would obviously drive us there and if we were going to eat something, order food, she could do that, she could order drinks, she could entertain any conversation that flew my way if I didn't want to deal with it because 
I don't know. Like I said, I know, um, I can't do general chit chat to the extent at which my mum can. And luckily, she 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 said yeah, she, she'd love to see Kit. Um, and um, that leads me on to the fact that Kit's mum was there, and so this was. Let's just break this down. This was the the woman who was the partner of my mum's ex husband, and it's just so weird. Not to me, but to think that, like, I was thinking at, at my grandma's funeral that I was saying, I was saying it actually in the last episode how my dad was there and how how fortunate it is that everyone in in the in the life there's there's no animosity, like it just doesn't even come into existence, or well, at least on this side of the family. <sighs> you know, everyone just gets along with it like adults. You, it's, it's weird. I, I don't know, where, why is it weird? It's especially weird because obviously now I'm socialising with people who aren't related to me, but yet you know what, in my life, from when I was eight years old or something, ridiculous, you know, you know, all it would have taken would have been a marriage and she would have been my stepmom. So it's, it's nice to see her as well. So Katie was the, the lead singer and front centre stage and got the what appeared to be the most attention from the crowd that night. Um, the band performed six songs, one or two I think were new to me. The last place that I saw Katie perform was Crowd of Favours. So yeah, there was definitely one new song since then. And also apparently three, no, not three, but at least two new members. Um, and obviously the reception was really good. But speaking of the the business, the Nation of Shopkeepers is was a really good venue, um, and had a great hot dog. Got sat down an hour before the performance started, so you know, with my mum there, I could just kind of check out and just enjoy the show and not have to deal with anything of anything else. A part of me said that the only reason I came was to have something to talk about on the podcast. Because I don't know why I said that. It's not it well it's not true but the attitude is it <sighs> like obviously I did it to support my stepsister because like she said me being there it means a lot and I know that I love seeing her perform because for one I love the band I love the songs it, it is great music and I don't get to hear it unless I see them live because I haven't released anything yet.
and two. I want to them at least Kate. I want Kate to see that I support her, and you know her future endeavors. If and when it comes to a a solo endeavor. Um, hint, hint, collaboration. This is trailing off. I can't think where I wanted to take the conversation. And... Oh, I'm struggling. I'll give you a, an insight into what's happening right now. I'm in my cocoon, which is code for car. It is 4 a.m. and I've just eaten and had dessert. And I would quite like to wrap this up and go to bed. Um, which I'm completely within my rights to do. However, I feel like I haven't given my everything to you for this episode. And for that, I'm sorry. But please, please keep listening because... There is a, that Nikki episode. There is a, an excerpt on my SoundCloud. Whilst you're on SoundCloud, please check out Kel at soundcloud.com, Kel the band. And my SoundCloud is soundcloud.com forward slash Thomas McNabb. So until next time, you can reach me at Thomas McNabb on Twitter, at LGB Tom. I am Tom's Brain Pod on Facebook, and there is an email address which is Tom's Brain Two at yahoo.co.uk. You can follow me on Instagram and. SoundCloud and all those places. I'm everywhere. Tom's Brain has many synapses. And I really want to thank you for listening. This one's been quite a struggle. But that is just a reflection on my own personal battle with my introverting, that's not a word, my introversion, <laughs> my introverted nature, in which, because living with this condition has been a part of my entire life, when it comes to having a transfusion, an eight-hour blood transfusion, it's not even a second thought to me, it just is the way it is. And so for me to sit here to you and say that that's what happened, it feels really stupid because that is just my life. But obviously to you, that's brand new information and it's still quite an interesting frame of reference to to a, a view so i do hope that this episode and, and the ones that follow even though there is no new treatment i i hope that i'm giving you something a an understanding and and, and, and learning from and whatever that is <laughs> please, please tell me <laughs> <laughs>